Herzlich willkommen, Sie Namgela, and welcome to the Bundesliga Connection with Chris Harrington on the SL Podcast in partnership with DW Berlin. It's time for the latest from Germany's domestic football league, the Bundesliga and more. For that, we are joined by Chris Harrington from our partner station Deutsche Welle in Berlin, Germany. Chris, Dortmund kept the pressure on Bayern Munich with their win over Wolfsburg. However, did you expect Haaland to make history in the process? No, not at all. You know, I wasn't even expecting Haaland to be on the pitch. The club kept it under wraps. I think Haaland himself might have pushed for his return kind of reminiscent of an old Michael Jordan, you know, back in the NBA, his second year in the league, fighting to be back in the playoffs, you know, because Ellen Holland has missed significant time being injured. There were reports coming out, uh, you know, from people close to his circle saying he'd be out until 2022. Well, you know, that was not the case. And uh, when he did check in, it was electricity all over, you know, uh, the stadium, no doubt. You know, and the magic number was 50, the historical number that uh, Holland was managed to achieve. He netted his 50th goal, you know, picking up where he left off, always known to get things got done offensively in front of goal. He didn't disappoint. His 50th goal in his 50th appearance, he's the first in the Bundesliga to do that, you know, and uh, he checked in for a Danielle Malin. Danielle Malin, you know, uh, did uh, manage to give them uh, the lead as well as Emery uh, Jean. Uh, putting Dortmund uh, ahead early, uh, well, actually, actually uh, by a good margin in the match before Holland even checked in. It's good that Daniel Malin actually scored as well because Malin has been kind of cold. There's been pressure for him to step up his offense. He's been scoring the last few outings. You know, uh, Wolfsburg actually needed the three points a lot more than Dortmund did going into the match when you look at the standings. You know, but Vout uh, Veghorz wasn't enough, and uh, Dortmund got it done. You know, it's uh, s- kind of sad because it's coming off this defeat in the Champions League. You know, obviously, Ellen Holland is wanting to make things happen in the Champions League for Dortmund as well, where their season is done because they recently lost to uh, Sporting uh, SP, uh, CP, excuse me, uh, 3-1 in their last outing. You know, but uh, Holland uh, is a good uh, note moving forward. He's a really bright... Uh, shiny bright uh symbol moving forward because they have a very important match coming up that's obviously the big showdown between Dortmund and Bayern Munich you know as for Wolfsburg they missed an opportunity but you know it is what it is they just couldn't get it done offensively Dortmund now they just trail Bayern Munich by one point and as I said you know the big showdown everyone will be looking forward to happens next Sunday Union Berlin and Bayer Leverkusen both had the chance to crack into the top four on Sunday, Chris. Yeah, I'll start with Leverkusen, who actually took advantage of that opportunity and now are third in the standings. You know, both sides were coming into the match with success in Europe. Leipzig, they beat Club Bruges, you know, slaughtered them 5 nothing. even though their Champions League campaign is over as well. And Leverkusen defeated uh, Celtic 3-2, so they had that momentum behind them. You know, but it was really clear early on that Leverkusen wanted the match more. You know, they kind of swarmed, you know, over their uh, hosts, you know, throughout the match. And as far as the history goes, Florian Vitz has been spectacular, filling the void left by uh, Kai Havertz at Leverkusen. You know, it's remarkable how efficient uh, he's been. He's a very young man. Well, he's only 19, and he's the youngest to score 10 goals in the Bundesliga. He now has 11 goals in the league. You know, uh, he sets a new single personal record as well with his fifth Bundesliga goal, you know, uh, this season as well. So he's really electric and remarkable. He's just another young talent, you know, that Leverkusen have in their arsenal. So Leverkusen, with their boost in the standings, they're a real deal. And Diaby, you know, sealed that effort, you know, uh, as well with the goal, you know, in that match. Uh, RB Leipzig, the only thing they had going for them, there was some history made on their side in their defeat. Andrea Silva netted his 43rd Bundesliga goal. He's now the all-time leading scorer for a Portuguese player in the league's history, so salute to them. Now, the other match, the interesting side, Union Berlin, they missed their opportunity, you know, to uh, crack that top four in the standings. You know, and uh, Frankfurt, you have to salute what Frankfurt did. They left it late against Union Berlin. They picked up their first home victory. You know, uh, first, uh, So got it done. And and then the 95th minute was the heroics from Indica. You know, uh, that was electric, and that was enough to get it past Union Berlin. Union Berlin has been tough recently. Max Cruza got them back into the match to level the score, but, you know, Indica's heroics were enough. Frankfurt actually have a lot to salute. The Eagles have been kind of down and out, you know, the new coach and everything, but now 
with three Bundesliga games, you know, victories in a row. They finished November perfect. You know, they're the only team in the league with a perfect 100% record. So that's a good thing moving forward. They look like, you know, maybe there's uh, some uh, positive things uh, in the Eagles near future. Looking ahead, Chris, Dalton will host Bayern on the next match day. Considering recent performances from both, what are you expecting? Well, I expect uh, if Holland's in the lineup, that equals problems for Bayern Munich. There's no doubt about that. You know, Alan Holland just brings a different level of confidence, you know, to that lineup. And and actually, I think he actually strengthens, you know, the potential performance from others, you know, because the pressure is not on them. All of the attention, you know, is going to be on and Alan Holland. And him making his return, you know, says that he can contribute offense. There haven't been any reports that says he's re-aggravated or re-injured something. So I expect him to be in that lineup. And I think it's going to be billed, of course, as, you know, Alan Holland versus Robert Lewandowski. Robert Lewandowski, you know, has been remarkable, you know, uh, in the Champions League specifically, you know, but uh, that's all of the comparisons. You know, Lewandowski leads the league in scoring right now. Alan Holland is close behind him. He kind of just showed, hey, you know, I was missing a long, uh, a lot of matches. He's been out since, what, match day eight? And he comes back within minutes, he nets a goal. So he's serious. I think it'll be a star versus star occasion. You know, obviously, pound for pound, Byron win, win this match, you know, without question. They have the better team, the better lineup, you know, but they've also had their bumps and bruises. There are no German Cup for them, you know, uh, whereas Dortmund, they're trying to defend, you know, their German Cup. So it, it should be an interesting match. You know, uh, I would lean towards it being an even affair, but Dortmund have been more shaky, you know, uh, lately up and down, you know, so, uh, you know, it's a hard one to call. Uh, let's just wait and see what happens. And I'll be here to talk about it after the, uh, the dust has settled. And just like always, Chris, what else has hit your radar this week? Yeah, it actually, uh, surrounds one of these players. I just talked about Robert Lewandowski. He had his 100th, uh, champions league appearance and he marked that with the hat trick. He scored four hat tricks, you know, in that competition. Now he's third on the list behind who else? Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, who both have eight. So uh, he has a little more work to do, Lewandowski. But, you know, it's worth the mention. They're looking really good in the Champions League with Lewandowski being the tip of their spear uh, of offense. And uh, it looks like he's not slowing down at all. I, I-, I wish him well and all the ex- success in the future. His coach thinks he's the best in the world. Let's see what happens in the Champions League moving forward. Thank you very much for the Bundesliga update, Mr. Chris Harrington from our partner station Deutsche Welle in Berlin, Germany. Have a fantastic day further. Danke und auf Wiedersehen. The Bundesliga Connection is a team effort driven by the following incredible individuals. The show is hosted by Aidan Hewitt and Chris Harrington. It is produced by Chris Harrington. It is edited by Aidan Hewitt and Uli Presch. And graphics are provided by David Scullard.